Hi everyone, this is the first in a series of videos which documents my exploits with this Innov Antennas 2 metre Yagi. It's just been delivered, comes in a very very sturdy cardboard tube, 2.4 metres long, about just under 8 feet. And this model is the 7 element Owl GT Super Light Yagi, which is a long name. It's optimised and wideband low impedance Yagi. Um, the specs of the Yagi, it's about 3 metres long by a metre wide, weighs about 2 kilograms, 13 dBi of gain, uh, and front to back of about 26.5. I chose this antenna uh, having researched the web, um, and basically because of its design, performance, and build quality. So let's get out the box, see how it looks. And there we go out the box, very well wrapped, very well packaged the main boom and all the radiant elements and the fixings all, all wrapped up. So now to un unwrap those. So here we have all the parts out of the box. You can see here the boom at the bottom, a bag of connectors and jubilee clips, the reflector, the radiating element and five directors. And if I zoom in you'll be able to see that the directors are all labelled up. Never go to the end of the re-radiating element. You can see there the adjustment which is on both ends to get the antenna tuned for the frequency you want for the SWR. And the booms in two parts. This smaller section connects into the main one and it just breaks it down to make it a bit more transportable. What I didn't realise was there's no coax socket with this antenna uh, so you're either meant to provide your own or connect direct onto the radiating element. That's something I'll look into. And you get a one sheet set of instructions which I won't show because it's copyright uh, but that effectively shows you the finished antenna made up uh, and basically points out where all the elements go and how to adjust it. So now onto the build. So I picked this particular model of the Innovent Tenors Yagi range because it's the lightweight model and it's portable. So it's got these grommets on the boom where the uh, elements slide through. There's a grommet on both sides which you'll see in a bit. But the first job is to connect the boom together and here we have the uh, short version, the short lens sorry, to connect to the main boom. And it's just a case of undoing uh, this nut and washer, removing the bolt, sliding that through, not losing the washer like I just did there, dropping that through and then tightening that back up. Now at the moment I'm uh, going to make the Yagi loose uh, just for testing purposes but effectively just tighten that up and you've got one full boom. So with the boom attached together, this is the front of the Yagi where Director 5 goes. And you can see there Director 5 and we've got the two areas already marked for the limit of the boom. And it is just a case of sliding this through. Now first time it was a bit tricky getting it through the other side. So I pushed through this side first and then pushed through that side just to even them up in terms of accessibility. And then you slide it through and line it up like so. So Director 5, the two marks show you where to push it into and it's as simple as that. And you can take it back out and then I'll push it back in. Now for the rest. So this is the Yagi made up without the dipole fitted so we've got the reflector at the back. And the directors out at front and that took well less than a minute I would say just to push those rods through so now we have to fit the dipole so you can see here the two holes in the boom for the dipole if I zoom in there's a smaller hole at the rear to take that insulated element uh, and the front hole for the uh, radiator element there there's two retaining screws and at each end if I pan down here, 
there is the tuning section that just slides in like a trombone slide there's one at each end and you can lock it off with the jubilee clips once you've found your best tune for where you're going to mount it so i've got now i'm going to fit this dipole uh, attach some feeder uh, and see uh, see about mounting it so here we have the underside of the yagi you can see the two bolts for the feeder and these are the two retaining bolts for the dipole uh, it's probably easy actually if you put these the other way around so the allen head is on this side and then you can take the nut on either side but i'm just doing it this way for now and um, if you look on the innov antennas website justin uh, g0 ksc the designer and manufacturer of the antenna uh, recommends you feed a choke through this antenna uh, so rather than just connect the coax direct uh, you take it through a choke which can take the form of a loop and there's information on the website for that or uh, a series of ferrite rings uh, on the feeding coax i've gone for the latter uh, and rather than go to the uh, the effort of making one myself uh, justin happens to sell this product uh, as well as the antennas so i've purchased this choke which is some sealed ferrite rings on coax with an end plug socket and two connections for the dipole and quite rightly uh, the information that uh, Justin provides once your coax has been split these two form part of the radiating element of the antenna so it's key to get these uh, as short as possible so you can see how that feeds on there or I could have it the way around and take the coax down the mast so you could have the coax leaving the back of the antenna uh, or coming down the middle uh, and down the mast and I think I can get this antenna in the car uh, with the reflector and the dipole still attached with the boom going through into the, uh, the, the seated area with this bit in the in the boot or the trunk as you say in America uh, I think this will all fit fine so I can leave this part of the antenna permanently set up and just slide the booms through uh, the directors through as you saw earlier so now it's a case of uh, fitting this choke temporarily like I say get it mounted uh, and just do some initial tests but it's getting dark so I think that might be for tomorrow so I've mounted the antenna on this mast this is the first time I've had this mast up so it's a bit of a learning curve it's sectional not everything's on I've put some guys on I've insulated the antenna from the mast with that plastic stub mast and the coax is connected unfortunately uh, the club analyzer uh, won't take an end plug uh, so I've had to use uh, RG58 to run down the garden but it'll, it'll do, it doesn't matter so now to get some readings and what I forgot to say was clearly to test your antenna properly it needs to be up a reasonable height and away from uh, interfering nearby objects and if you go on the uh, Inav antennas website there's uh, guidance there in terms of of how high you should uh, should mount your antenna but uh, up what would class as reasonable height here I'm testing at five and a half meters and uh, away from any interfering objects so if you remember from earlier the way to adjust the SWR is those uh, trombone type sections on the end of the dipole well I've set those to the recommended start setting of 30 mil extension on both sides so here we are at the uh, top of the garden there's the mast coax running down the garden and as I say that's just temporary RG58 and here we are with the club analyzer power it up get down to the bottom of the two meter band which is 144 and you see there we've got SWR of 1 and a resistance of 50 ohms 144 300 which is the SSB calling frequency still the same moving up to 145 still SWR of 1 and 50 and going through the FM where you wouldn't normally be with a horizontal beam to the very top of the band you can see the SWR has risen to 1.2 marginal increase 
but clearly we're going to be down this end of the band where the SWR is rock bottom so there's 144 again we'll just get to it there 144 300 so you can see a lovely flat spot all the way through the portion of the band so I was about for a good start excellent so I just need to tighten everything up figure out a better way of working this mast and I think we're ready to go on the air so here we are I've got the rig set up uh, it's now on the proper Westflex 103 coax I'm at the bottom of the mast because it doesn't stretch much further I need a longer length and here we are at the bottom of the two metre band uh, if I change that to SWR uh, and key up we're on CW 50 watts you can see there the SWR is one to one I've just gone to power to show so power is 50 watts and SWR well low so if I move up the band key up again you see you can, SWR is not moving up near the calling frequency SWR again just to show if I go around to power again so there's 50 watts SWR rock bottom Again, power 50 SWR not moving so you can see well through the SSB there's uh, clearly a good low SWR so that's uh, spot on for the for the expected conditions for this antenna so as you can see the owl Yagi very simple to make tune uh, and to put together and take apart to use portable I'm going to use it with the car uh, and you could see the, uh, the the tuning was very straightforward I followed the instructions to the letter and the tune was perfect uh, just following the instructions uh, but easy to adjust those trombone sliders in and out if, if you needed to adjust the tuning so the next video will be to take the antenna up on a high ground on the moors somewhere uh, and see what contact we can make on on 2 meters SSB. I hope you enjoyed the video.